Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptair Owners Club. There is this YouTube channel that I think just started, doesn't have too many subscribers, so maybe you guys want to check them out. Wings, Wheels, and Wires. Um, he has, he evidently went to Electrify Expo in Long Beach, and I guess Sandy Monroe is there, and he happened to get an interview with Sandy Monroe there. It is a seven minute and 30 second interview or the video is seven minutes and 30 seconds, but there is a small segment in there where he asks Sandy about Aptera, and it's very, very interesting um, how Sandy responds to his questions. So let's uh, take a listen. Uh, the, the audio isn't great, but um, it's understandable. Aptera, when do you see yeah. the first one hitting the street? And what September. Do you September? Okay, so Sandy says September, the first one hitting the street, and he said it with not much he hesitation, and as if he knew the answer, and it was something very, very matter of fact. This is something that we've never heard before. Um, and September is not that far away. Uh, September is just uh, three, four months away at, at, at most. So does Sandy know something that we don't know? Now, I suspect what he means is that the first Delta builds are going to be built in September. And I think these are going to be the validation builds. They're going to use the uh, the parts from CPC, and they'll have all the suppliers, and they'll they're going to start making a few. I don't suspect that this, these are customer deliveries by September. If if it is, that that is shocking news uh, because they've always said that it's you know the the party line from Aptera has always been nine months from the time they get funding, and they have not said that they've gotten funding as of yet. And so even if they were to have get funding right now, it would be nine months from now before customers take delivery. Now, I do think that they have enough money to start building a few um, of the Delta versions, the launch editions for validation to test, the, to, you know, do the crash testing, um, do final validation of the um, suspension and solar and all that other stuff, and just make sure that things are all working as designed. Uh, so I think... You know, if they were to start doing that in September, that would be a huge deal. And the way that Sandy said it, it was very matter of fact, and like he didn't think about it, like it was a known thing. Um, he like and he like he sounded like he was not speculating. So, and I suspect that Sandy knows something because he is one of their um, advisors and pretty involved. And as you can tell from the rest of this inter interview, he's he's still very gung ho about Aptera. And what does it look? What do you predict like the ramp rate on that to be? Um, probably initially a couple of thousand, um, a couple of thousand a month, maybe or maybe less than that even. But then, um, um, so so here clearly he's like speculating and he's kind of guessing. It wasn't like September. September he was like no September. You know if he if he knew this he'd be like he he would say, okay it's gonna be five hundred a month or a thousand a month. But he's he's kind of like guesstimating so that makes me think that september date is there's really something to that um, uh, we're we're predicting uh, uh something like next year they'll be they'll be making about twenty thousand okay. um uh twenty thousand um a year and then the ramp up after that is huge All it, right. uh, basically it's just uh, it's not easy because the, the car itself is going to be easy to build but it's not easy to find um uh, the um, the suppliers that we need for that car, right? <clears throat> so, scale, um, I'd imagine. Yeah, right. So that that's going to be uh, a bit of an issue. But when it comes out, it'll be a perfect build. Uh, the car is a delight to drive. It's it's very quick. Um, and you, I mean, really and truly, even if you pay more for an Aptera, you're going to pay almost nothing for the electricity. Fuel, uh, I mean, uh, the fuel price goes away as long as you're in like a California or a, below the Mason-Dixon line kind of Yeah, Seattle place. may not be ideal. It'll uh, still Seattle, work, it won't be the, ideal. Detroit might be a bit of an issue too, but at the end of the day, um, uh, for most of the country, for most of where the country lives, um, it'll be uh, an ideal uh, vehicle. I'm it's sure smaller, Arizona will love it. It's quicker, it. it's, it's got everything going for it. I, I know I've ordered mine because, uh, you know, so I, did I. Like, I, <laughs> like I said, I have an i3 and good and bad about the vehicle, but the nimble, nimble handling is one of the things I yeah. love about it. And I yeah. expect at least that much from the Aptera. It will be, uh, it will, it'll be that and more. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for okay. your
All right, so that was a very, uh, I'll link this video in the description below. Uh, go watch the entire thing. I think it was, uh, there's some other interesting stuff. But um, Sandy sounded very sure about the September build date. So uh, I have to believe that there's something to it. Um, and then he, you know, he felt like the ramp up was maybe, maybe a thousand a month and then hopefully 20,000 a year by, um, by, by 2024. And then he thought the ramp up would be pretty, pretty quick. And then, you know, you can see how he's very um, happy about, he thinks that the build quality is going to be really good because of the CPC parts just fitting together very well. There's no thermal expansion, that kind of stuff. And he thought that the vehicle was very easy to build. And the biggest problem would be finding good suppliers, um, that the actual final assembly will be pretty easy. Okay. So um, then Aptera on Twitter, uh, basically, uh, Put out this thing on May 24th, 2023, and they said anyone can guess what these are for. Well, it says very clearly right here AGV5, and um, if you look at here, it also says AGV20. So I think these are numerical AGVs, and as we know before, their supplier of AGVs is Red Viking. And so if you look at um, Red Viking's website, you can see here this is their AGV. And if you if you look at this thing, it looks very similar to this. So you see the red and the, this this three thing here, the red and here's three things here. So this is this is the AGV. It's it's modified. Obviously, there's this white. This is orange. Um, and so they they say that they do custom tooling. And so this is like AGVs for high production auto assembly line. And they they were talking about how they retrofitted a um, a older chain based conveyor belt conveyance line with AGVs and it. These are all the key um, advantages and um, they switched it over and you can do custom tooling for exactly what you want. So these AGVs are probably custom made. Um, there's there's some customizations for Aptera in here. Now, the interesting thing is, is that they have uh, they used in they can have inductive power transfer AGVs or battery powered AGVs. And I don't know which one Aptera got. The battery part AGVs, obviously, you don't have to install inductive power transfer in the floors. Um, so that's good. You don't, have to, you, can, you don't have to cut shallow grooves. And I didn't see Aptera cutting any shallow grooves in their um, El Camino Real um, place. So I think they went with battery power AGVs. What that means is if they went with battery power AGVs, they cannot run their line 24-7. They have to have some downtime to let the AGVs recharge. So I suspect what they're planning on doing is a single um, shift. So maybe a 10 hour shift or an eight hour shift and then letting the AGVs charge overnight. Um, it's possible that they could run two shifts. Um, I don't know how long these uh, battery powered AGVs can last. Maybe they can run for 16 hours and then charge in eight hours. Um, not sure, or maybe they can charge eight hours, have like a two hour break to charge and then um, go for another eight hours. So they may be able to run two, two shifts um, with the battery powered AGVs. These people that they worked about, they talked about in this um, case study, they wanted 24 seven operation. So they went with uh, inductive power AGVs, but taking these two things into account. So Aptera got delivery of their AGVs um, and this is a result also of their California grant. The California grant um, talked about Red Viking. And so um, it is one of the suppliers that the uh, California grant mentioned. So in those cases, those suppliers, they can get refunded um, for, for those purchases. So they purchased that ahead of time. And then you couple that with Sandy Monroe's um, interview recently. And maybe things at Aptera are moving faster than we thought. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.